What's up folks, it's your buddy Fatal Ready. Tonight we're going to be going over the results for SummerSlam. We start off with the kickoff show. Rusev and Lana versus Andrade Cien Almas and Zelina Vega. This was an okay match. It was deserving to be on the kickoff show. Almas distracts Lana, which allows Zelina Vega to get the roll up for the pin. Really don't know where they were going on this one, but like I said, this match was deserving to be on the kickoff show. We then have Drew Gulak versus Cedric Alexander for the Cruiserweight Championship. This is a good match. There's a little bit of flippy shit going on. After a flurry of near falls, Cedric Alexander was able to get the pin and retain the title. We then have the Revival versus the B-Team for the Raw Tag Team Championships. Seriously, this match was straight out ridiculous. Scott Dawson had Curtis Axel rolled up for the pin, but Bo Dallas fell into the pin, which allowed Curtis Axel to reverse it, and the B-Team retained their titles. So it's official. The Raw Tag Team division is a joke. It's being head by a comedy group. Wow. Great. Wonderful. We then go to the main card. We start off with Seth Rollins versus Dolph Ziggler for the Intercontinental title. Dean Ambrose and Drew McIntyre are at ringside. I was really surprised that they started off with this match. It was a good match. I liked it. It was an excellent start for the pay-per-view. Ambrose and McIntyre got into it for a bit. Seth Rollins got the curb stomp on Dolph Ziggler and becomes the new Intercontinental Champion. We then have the Bludgeon Brothers versus the New Day for the SmackDown Tag Team titles. Oh my god, this was a painful match. And not being in a performance-wise, I mean, they were hurting each other. The Bludgeon Brothers and the New Day were beating the living tar out of each other. It ended up with Rowan getting the Bludgeon Brothers DQ'd by hitting everybody with a hammer. The only downside I can see to this is that we're probably going to have the New Day and the Bludgeon Brothers for the next couple weeks again. We then have Kevin Owens versus Braun Strowman with the Money in the Bank contract on the line. This was a really quick match. I think Kevin Owens only got one hit out, but the rest of it was dominated by Braun Strowman. He got the power slam and the pin. We then have Becky Lynch versus Carmella versus Charlotte Flair for the SmackDown Women's title. Right off the bat, Carmella starts to work on Becky Lynch fighting with Charlotte Flair. There was a ton of action throughout this whole match. It was a really good match. Becky Lynch got the disarm her on Carmella, but Charlotte Flair hit the natural selection on Becky Lynch and got the pin. After the match, Becky Lynch and Charlotte Flair were hugging it out in the middle of the ring. The crowd was definitely booing with this, but the boos then changed to cheers when Becky Lynch hit Charlotte Flair out of nowhere, laid her out, got her outside of the ring, beat her up some more, and left the ring. So does this mean we're going to have a Becky Lynch heel turn, or is she going to remain face and Charlotte Flair stays as a heel? We'll have to wait on Tuesday to figure that one out. We then have Samoa Joe versus AJ Styles for the WWE Championship. This is a really good match. I also like this one. There was a ton of offense between Samoa Joe and AJ Styles. Samoa Joe gets on the microphone and tells AJ's wife that AJ won't be coming home, but don't worry, I'll be your new daddy. Which sets AJ Styles off. He beat the hell out of Samoa Joe, grabbed the chair, and beat the hell out of him as well. We then have Elias wasting time. What? As he starts to go play his guitar, his guitar breaks. <laughs> He throws a temper tantrum and walks backstage. I have absolutely no idea what the fuck this whole thing was about. We then have The Miz versus Daniel Bryan. This was a decent match. It was good. Both The Miz and Daniel Bryan had a ton of back and forth. Maurice slipped The Miz a set of brass knuckles. And unseen by the referee, he lays out Daniel Bryan and gives him pin. Really wasn't crazy about the ending of this match, but being it we were talking about The Miz... It's not surprising. We then have Baron Corbin versus the return of Demon Balor. Honestly, this is a glorified squash match. Demon Balor makes short work of Baron Corbin, who spends most of this match bitching about what form of Balor he was supposed to be facing tonight. We then have Jeff Hardy versus Shinsuke Nakamura for the United States title. This match starts off with both Hardy and Nakamura taking turns taunting each other. Once the match starts, it actually was pretty cool. Shinsuke Nakamura failed at a low blow, and Jeff Hardy took a nasty spill with a failed swanton bomb on the apron. But Nakamura was able to get the Kinshasa for the pin. After the match, Randy Orton comes out. He rushes the ring, but turns back at the last second. We then have Ronda Rousey versus Alexa Bliss for the Raw Women's Championship. Before the match starts, Natalya comes out she's wearing a jacket that was once worn by her father jim the anvil Nightheart. the first few moments of this match alexa bliss spent mostly running away then ronda rousey starts playing around with her and then gets down to beating her up ronda rousey locks in the arm bar alexa bliss submits and ronda rousey is a new raw women's champion she celebrates in the ring with natalia and the bella twins we then come to our main event roman reigns versus brock lesnar oh boy 
Right at the start of this match, Corey mentions the roar of the crowd. Can't really hear the roar of the crowd when the arena mics are turned down. Shortly after the announcements, Braun Strowman comes out and says whoever wins this match will be facing the monster in the bank. I initially thought, and I'm pretty sure the rest of the crowd thought as well, this was going to end up being a triple threat match, but Braun Strowman stood at ringside just waiting for a winner. The crowd was very enthusiastic throughout this whole match with a chant of you both suck. The match started out with Roman Reigns on offense, giving a whole bunch of Superman punches, a whole bunch of spears. Brock Lesnar dodged one of the spears, and Roman Reigns went out of the ring and hit Braun Strowman. Brock Lesnar then goes out of the ring, gives Strowman an F5, beats him down with the Money in the Bank case, throws the case back up to the stage, grabs a chair, beats him down with it. Lesnar gets into the ring with the chair. He eats a pin by Roman Reigns, gets a pin, and Roman Reigns is the new Universal Champion. Finally, thank fucking God we did this one. Unfortunately, due to Strowman being laid out, there was no follow-up from what Strowman said earlier. Roman Reigns stands tall, celebrating in the ring with the belt, and we close tonight's pay-per-view. Despite four of the matches on the cards being rematches from Extreme Rules, this was actually a pretty good pay-per-view. Most of the downside I'd have to say for tonight had to do with the kickoff show, which seriously, two-hour kickoff show, we waited 45 minutes for the first match. What the hell? This was ridiculous. But usually the kickoff show isn't all that great, with the exception of the Cruiserweights. That was pretty good. That could have been on the main roster. But all in all, I like this one. This was cool. Can't wait to see on Monday and Tuesday what the fallout will be, but we'll get to that when the time comes. But that'll do it for the results for SummerSlam. Leave a comment down below what you thought of the pay-per-view, what you thought of this video. If you liked it, please give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to share and subscribe. I've been Fatal Roadie. You've been awesome. Thank you very much for watching. And remember, if it's too loud, you're too old. See ya.